Namaskar. My question is about certain emotions that I might qualify as negative. And I appreciate the idea that um, looking at it might not be useful and that turning away might be a more positive uh, action. However, do we, are we saying that those emotions don't have a space at all? So if I take anger, for example, yes. does anger have a space in a contained um, Can it serve me still? Well, if I look at anger as such, as, a, as a, an emotion, one can also look at anger as something which is sort of a wave, an, an electromagnetic wave of something which has been released out of someone into the into the collective consciousness, if you want to put it that way. One doesn't necessarily have to identify with anger as being one's own thing. It can also be that when a system is weak, that it is porous to these waves of anger that take over. Why do I have to identify with that and say, oh, this is my anger, and then I have to feed it every day? I can also say, just for argument's sake that this is a universal wave that I can either allow to take over my system or deflect. So what does anger actually do? It materially attacks the cells of your body, it does. You can feel anger as a wave in the system just as you can feel fear as a wave in the system. So if you look at anger, why would you want to identify with something which why would you want to know if it serves you when you know that it attacks the very fundaments of your system? Because when a person is angry, they can feel it in the very cells of their body. So, if you were to train yourself to deflect that and the way it is deflected, the ultimate way to deflect it is to be in surrender. That is the way, because else you're actually engaging with it. You can engage with it and deflect it, but you can also be in a state of surrender, because surrender to the master within is what strengthens the system to withstand the attacks of these universal waves of anger, of fear, and so on. There was a time in the history of humankind when anger did not exist. Its manifestation is not concurrent with the appearance of the first humans. So, can anger help? Certainly there are moments when with the force of anger you can kill the enemy, but if the enemy has to be killed, it can also be killed without anger. Mm. I'm talking in times of warfare. It's a, it's a matter of strengthening your system through surrender so that every action that emanates from the system emanates from the truth. And then anger has no place because you don't have to be angry to be angry. You can project anger if it's needed without the negative impact on your system of those waves, you know. And you protect yourself against this anger taking over by being in surrender to the soul, to the master, to the antaratman, starting to cleave your way through that ego to find it again, what you knew as a child. So it's not that I'm negating emotions, what I'm saying is that the system is best protected against the negative impact of those emotions when you go into surrender. It's like you 
you block all the holes. You can try it out, you can experiment with it. You don't have to believe what I'm saying, just experiment. Next time you have a burst of anger, try to just bend, actually physically bend down and just to feel this. Even if you, even if you don't feel the soul, you can imagine your heart is the soul, the organ itself is the soul and just bend down and the anger just does not have a chance to take over the system after that. And this applies to fear as well. That, that wave of fear, that tremor of fear that attacks the cells of the body. You can defend yourself against it. Does it get easier? Hmm? Does it get easier as you practice? Yes, it very much gets easier. Fear is something that quite fast disappears. But you have to be at it, you have to understand that whenever you feel the fear, that you immediately become aware that it's taking over your system and that already is enough. And then you bend and surrender and it's gone after that. Thank you. That wave, that tremor of fear that takes over the system, attacking the very cells. If you were to sit down and observe the fear and say, well, this is fear, this is not me, this is fear, you are then... In fact, if you look at any emotion and distance yourself from it, and say that this is not me, you're still empowering it by giving it attention. You still are empowering it. And then what you're also doing is, you're creating an observer within yourself, which is not a very safe practice. There are many people who actually lose it, they get mad because in the conceptual they are asking, who am I, who am I, and I'm not this, I'm not that, and they're taking up practices which are not practices but which are experiences that come along the path of Self-Realization. Like the who am I is a question that emerges, it is not a starting of a sadhana, and especially when the surrender is not taught. 